Let's move on to the Sunday nighter, which we will be live betting right here on Pub Sports Radio. Tennessee Titans, 5-2, and 3-1 and one on the road at the Kansas City Chiefs, 5-2, and 2-1 two, two and at home at Arrowhead Stadium, Kansas City, Missouri. 58 Fahrenheit, clear. Five miles per hour is the wind. Let's take a look at this line history. It opens up with the Chiefs, minus 11.5 at minus 102. That minus 11.5 got up to minus 117 this morning. It's now at minus 110. From a total's perspective, it opened up at 46 and a half, minus 107 to the under. It's now minus 111 to the under, so a four cent move to the under. And uh, and Gerald Jones says New Orleans might win the South. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, look, they they could easily. I like what their offense is doing. And I look forward to talk about that because that is the Monday nighter. And that's a hell of a game we get to talk about. But let's talk about this. Sunday nighter, 7,376 tickets in, 63% of the tickets, and 75% of the cash on the Chiefs. So the Chiefs have the big bets and the sharp action. 69% of the tickets, 72% of cash on the over. Uh, Dennis Garcia took Nola to win the division at plus 900 a week ago. Not hating it. No, that's a beautiful spot to be in. Uh, Birdie is on the Titans plus 11 and the under 48 and a half. Titans come in off their fifth straight win, 17-10 at Houston. Uh, Malik Willis was in for Tannehill. He was dealing with an ankle injury. I tried to get information on whether Tannehill would be back. I still, I guess we'll find out tomorrow at practice. Uh, Willis was 6-10 for 55 yards and a pick, but the Titans put up 314 yards on the ground. Uh, Derek Henry continued his domination of the Texans. It's unbelievable. 32 carries for 219 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Sharpie had... Henry to go 200 plus and two touchdowns at nine to one. It was Henry's fourth straight 200 yard game against the Texans. He's the first player in NFL history to have at least 150 yards and two touchdowns on the ground in four straight games against the same opponent. It was also a sixth 200 yard game that ties him with OJ Simpson and Adrian Peterson for the most in NFL history. Four straight 100 yard 100 yard games rushing this year. Dontrell Hilliard came in and ran eight times for 83 yards. The defense held the Texans to just 161 total yards. Texans were two of 14 on third down, three sacks, six quarterback hits. Fulton had an interception. Vrabel wouldn't give a Tannehill update until after tomorrow's practice. And that was the first game Tannehill missed since week seven of 2019. Malik Willis, though, is approaching the week as if he's starting, which he should. Amani Hooker hurt his shoulder in the first quarter, didn't return. He's questionable to go this week. The Titans are very good defensively uh, on third down. They're by far the best in the league right now. Uh, opponents are converting 25.58% of third downs. Very impressive. The Chiefs come in off their bye week. We all know the stats here. I'll give a couple of them. Reed is 20-3 and three after the bye week. 86.9% winning percentage. At home, he's 12-1. and one. Now, that's just straight up, obviously. 92.3% winning percentage. But in seven matches against Tennessee since 2013, the Chiefs are 2-5, and five, which is a wild stat. These Chiefs yeah. were last seen in a dominant 44-23 win at San Francisco. Excellent on both sides of the ball. Mahomes, 25-34 for 423 yards, three touchdowns and a pick, got five sacks, also an eight quarterback hits from the defense. And so, you know, I was trying to dive in a little bit more on uh, – how good this Chiefs team is and where are their weaknesses. And You touched earlier on the show uh, when we talked about the trade with the Falcons that, that their rookie cornerbacks have been better than we expected. Uh, Trent McDuffie got hurt in week one. Rashad Fenton got hurt, I believe, in week five. And so Joshua Williams, the fourth rounder, and the seventh rounder, Jalen Watson, had to be starters earlier than you know Andy Reid wanted them to. And they've been, they've been good. So I was like, where are they, are they bad anywhere? And the offensive line is not being good. Uh, the Chiefs have given up 85 pressures within two and a half seconds of the snap. That's the fourth most in the league. Orlando Brown Jr. and Andrew Wiley uh, could be considered the worst starting tackle duo in football. So you do have a weakness there, but this is a really good football team. They're big favorites here. What's your plan for the Sunday nighter and the Titans Chiefs? Kansas City has kind of put it on a couple teams, but they've put it on a couple teams that have defenses that they match up great against and are able to put it on them. Tennessee's defense kind of coming around. The pass rush has been better, and 
Like just that. Yeah, the, the numbers are a little skewed for Kansas City as far as how their run defense is. They were effective early in the season, but they're effective against some teams that didn't run the ball well. The Cardinals, the first week, were in a negative game script, didn't end up running that much at all. The Chargers haven't run good against anyone, not named the Browns, really. And uh, the Colts, we've had some injuries early in the season. They were, you know, forced to. Uh, actually, they did run 24 times against the Chiefs. That's a surprising. The Buccaneers, if you, anyone can guess how many <laughs> attempts they had against the Bucs, would surprise me. But uh, it was six rushing attempts for three yards. I don't even know if that's right. Might have to double check that. But over the last three weeks against the Raiders, Bills, and 49ers, they're giving up almost six yards per carry on average on the ground. And the Bills don't even really like to run the ball, guys. So it's not good what I'm seeing from this Kansas City defense on the ground going up this week against Derrick Henry. That's got to be the game plan. I really don't think Tannehill plays. I think the line movement kind of indicates that Tannehill is unlikely to go. And I think it is just, hey, let's let's try short stuff. Let's run our quarterback. Let's lean on Henry. And let's try to, you know, if we can get four or five yards to carry with Henry, we can move the ball and we can score. I'm really tempted to take the points here. I don't think I don't think anybody, and yes, the Titans are very overrated. Their record shouldn't be this good. Uh, you know, I don't think they're one of the best five, six teams in the league. There's no chance. And, the, you know, obviously they're starting a backup quarterback. But right now, Kansas City against even competent defenses is – not not uh, not a team that should be you know laying this many points against a good good a good good run game and yeah like you know if you want to stack the box against henry and try to stop that i I, maybe they don't have the answer for that (gasps) maybe we don't see you know I, i guess that would be my my game plan all week is trying to figure out like if they come up and just try to take derrick henry out of the game how are we gonna beat that with screens how are we gonna beat that with draws with you know, with a, a lot of play action, with some extended handoffs, with some bubble screens, you know, just easy stuff for the young quarterback. I don't know. This is a, this, this feels like a close game that's never, you know what I mean by a close game that's never close? <laughs> you know, like Tennessee's never outside the number, but you never believe that Tennessee has a chance to win the game, nor do they ever lead. <coughs> and you have Frank Clark suspended. Yeah. How do you think that help. plays in? What is it? Is it just two games for the personal conduct thing? Yeah, that yeah. doesn't help. When he was when he missed games in previous, you know, I think last year, that's this defense looked quite a bit different. So, yeah, I think this is a uh, one of those games that nobody pays attention to, and the Titans just lose by ten. Huh. Interesting. And Birdie has it. Yeah, Henry runs against stack boxes every week. Everyone's trying to stop. People have heard of him. <laughs> So what do you think of this total here? This uh, total opened up at 46 and a half sitting there right now. <clears throat> yeah, not much action on that, and that makes sense. I think that's a pretty good number. Kansas City's not going to go out and you know try to put up the, I don't know, the fireworks like they did against the Niners or what they – I mean, the, the Cardinals just asked for it by blitzing like 80% of the time. What are you going to do? Blitz, blitz Mahomes and expect everyone to cover everyone on an island? Have fun with that, but – um, and this is they, they have a decent matchup on defense, not decent enough to keep them in the damn game, but I think, uh, but just fuck it, put me down, put me down for a Titans bet. Let's we'll see what my best number is here. Oh, well, you're just gonna log me out, bookmaker. Is that what we're doing? Let's see what we can get you. Interesting live bet baseball. Wow, we it's got moved. baseball in action. We gotta, we gotta wrap it up, Jimmy. There's sports to watch. It's moved to 13. Yeah, give me that. 13 at minus 115 at Pavada. Wow. We'll see what I'm, – I'm interested to see what Chris has this at. 13 minus 120. I don't want to pay that much. Wow. There's not a big difference between a lot of these numbers. So, yeah, just whatever whatever you think the best price is. I'm going to play a, I'm gonna play a 12 minus 111 here. Plus 13, minus 115 available for record-keeping purposes here. All right, that is the Sunday Nighter 